love that's been poured out uh, by those here in the U.S. Uh, that have supported me on, you know, going and learning these things that are important to us as Black Americans uh, who have been cut off from our culture, our language, and our tradition since the 1700s, if not before then. Uh, there was a time, there was a time in this country, in the United States, where uh, it was literally illegal uh, for our ancestors to use evil names, uh, illegal to teach evil traditions and cultures on the threat of imprisonment, torture, and even capital punishment in death. Uh, so unfortunately, some of our ancestors chose to live in the sense of, okay, we won't be able to pass these things down to our children um, but we'll be able to survive. And so a lot of my African friends ask me um, over the years, over the last 20, 30 years, why do most Black Americans have um, English names? You know, what happened to your, your language, all these type of things? Well, uh, the simple fact is, is that the slavery ordeal of Black Americans, as we were, my ancestors, that is, were taken from um Southeast Nigeria, and especially through the slave port of Calabar over to Virginia, where my ancestors are from in the United States. Um, it was so brutal, um, you know, so demeaning um, that the people just did what it took to survive. And, and that in, included, you know, being stripped of our names and our cultures, our family history, all of these things. And so many of us are like me. We're restoring all of these things unto our households. And I thank all my native speaking Igbo people that uh, have embraced me, especially over in Nigeria in and of itself. Uh, I really appreciate you accepting uh, what I call a di diaspora Igbo over here all the way in America and embracing you as, our, uh, as your own, which has been really a great blessing as a lot of my friends from overseas that are actually of Igbo origin, born in Igbo land. Uh, in Nigeria actually said, you're one of us. So that means a lot unto me. Um, because again, for most Black Americans, all of us for the most part are at least part Igbo, as Igbo being uh, one of the main uh, and most numerous groups of people that we come from. I've seen estimates from about 10 million people were taken from Igbo land and spread across the Americas. That includes the Caribbean, you know, Jamaica, Barbados, Cuba, and so on. And then to mainland North America being the United States as well. So um, the Igbo diaspora is large and it's huge. And so a lot of people don't really realize that. And so again, a lot of us are restoring ourselves to our Igbo language and culture even among some of the backlash that we may experience here in America for doing just that. Uh, but nonetheless, I won't hold us there, and I didn't mean to give us a history lesson. I just wanted to really kind of make that clear to uh, especially a lot of Native Africans of how Black Americans like myself were stripped of our culture and our language. But there's a minority like myself that says we won't go for that, and we will reconnect with our own people and speak our own language that has been forbidden to us for centuries. But nonetheless, um, if you follow along with me, you know that I study things in, um, in spurts or in modules. And so lately I've been studying the things that comprise a house from the inside to the form of the house, to the items that are in a house. Uh, I've been learning and memorizing these things to the best of my ability um, in order to become more fluent in Igbo and also build my vocabulary. So this is part two of that lesson on house in Igbo. And of course, for my native speaking uh, Igbo brothers and sisters, feel free to correct me. And I, I appreciate that because I don't have anybody technically to uh, give an inter interchange of the language uh, one with another from a face to face standpoint. So my interactions basically are through books and through videos and um, uh, through social media. All right. So again, this is part two of the series of studies entitled Ola, which means house in the Igbo language of Nigeria. Ola, house in Nigeria. And I'm going to go over the items from 51 to 100 that I've learned that, uh, you know, last week I did items 1 to 50. Now we're going to do 51 to 100. There's many more. 
you'd be surprised at how many items are in a household uh, that you have to learn when you're learning a new language. So let me get down to the slide within my PowerPoint presentation uh, for items 51 to 100. If you want to see the other items, they're also on my Facebook account. You can scroll back to about this time last week, and I have part one, which was items 1 to 50. But this is items 51 to 100 today. All right, so almost there in my presentation. All right, so the first word would be odidiahu, which would mean frame. So when you're building a house, you have a frame for the house. And I like to give the literal translation of the words where I can give the literal translation. Sometimes I know them, sometimes I don't. Um, but the literal translation of frame for a home would be odidi, which means form, and ahu, which means the, in other words, an article. So you're basically saying the frame when you say odidi ahu for frame of a home. The next word looks like it's been borrowed and modified for Igbo for freezer. Uh, so freezer would be frieza, frieza, freezer. And you know, as a side note, uh, for many people that grew up in the black community, as I did until about 14 years ago, um, we speak our own brand of English as well. We speak the King's English, the proper English. But at the same time, we're among ourselves. We speak what's called black vernacular or Ebonics. I'm not scared or afraid to talk about that nowadays. A lot of people are ashamed of that. But you know what Ebonics and black vernacular is? It's basically our accent and some African words mixed into the English that we speak. And if you notice something, when I say the word Frieza, which in Igbo, it sounds a lot like how we speak in black America when we're speaking among ourselves, when we call it Ebonics. So if you notice something, we don't speak uh, the ER very well when we speak truly our Ebonics, uh, which is basically the same thing as Black Americans form of Pigeon, e uh, pigeon English, as you would find in Nigeria, it's just our version. In America, we don't say ER a lot. We'll, say, we'll change it to uh, uh at the end, just like this word here, Frieza, which would be Freezer in uh, American English. So it's very, very interesting that the more and more I study Igbo, the more and more I see how much of an influence that it has on the tongue of black Americans that we forgot and didn't even realize why we have this accent because it came from our ancestors. And I'm not ashamed of it for one minute. So again, let me move on. Uh, the word for freezer in um, Igbo is frieza, frieza for freezer. Garage, another modification of an English word that I believe is the correct uh, assumption of this. And it would be garage, garage for garage. Grill, I don't have the literal translation of it, but I'll just go ahead and pronounce it the way I find it in books. Um, I have imi ihe for grill, imi ihe, grill. Again, if you know a little translation, hey, make a comment and help me out with this. I appreciate it. Furnace. I really love how furnace is said in the Igbo language of Nigeria. It comes from two root words, uh, inukwu, ako. And inukwu means great and ako means fire. So when you're saying furnace in Igbo, you're literally saying great fire. Um, but again, Igbo language is just like English in some ways. You have what I would call contractions. And so when you put two words together, you chop off or you get rid of uh, some of the words, some of the letters, that is. Just like do not becomes don't uh, in English, you do some of that in Igbo as well. Uh, they call that verb dropping. Uh, so in this case, you wouldn't say inukwu ako, those are the root words, but you would say it in this way, where you would drop uh, what's what I would call in English, the U, that's not the proper um, letter name in Igbo. I'm not going to use those. It's to keep it from being complicated. In Inukwu, you, you drop that last U, so it becomes Inukwako. Inukwako furnace. 
again, in Nuquaco furnace. Okay. When it comes to furniture, uh, there's a word that you'll see a lot in the Igbo language from my study so far, ingwa. Ingwa means accessories of some type. Um, and in this case, ola means house. So what you're saying literally when you're saying furniture, you're saying ingwa ola, which means accessories for within the house. So that means the furniture within the house. Uh, so furniture would be pronounced as ingwa ola furniture. Ingwa ola furniture. Garden. I found two words for garden. One I prefer just because it's in the Igbo Bible of Nigeria. And what I do with the Igbo Bible, I try to kill two birds with one stone, symbolically speaking. I learn God's word, but I also learn the Igbo language at the same time. And so when I was studying Genesis, I came across this word a lot, ogige. And it was a description of the Garden of Eden. So ogige means garden. Ogige, garden. Another word that I found in my studies for garden is ubi. Ubi can also be used for garden, but I prefer ogige just because it's in God's word. Again, that's garden, ogige. Gutter, uh, that which keeps the rainwater from seeping into the sensitive parts of your house and diverting it away from your home, uh, would be gata, gata for gutter, gata, gutter. Hallway. Hallway will be pronounced in Igbo as holu. Holu. Hallway. Hamper for your dirty clothes. Uh, your laundry to be washed. Uh, would be hampa. Hampa for hamper. So again, that's hampa. Hamper. I found three words for heater. As you can see, the little graphic of the space heater. Uh, I found Ihe Epomako for heater. Ihe Epomako for heater. Please forgive my accent as I apologize every time I try to say the uh, KP um, letter. Actually, KP is one letter, it's not two in Igbo. It's very difficult with my English tongue and accent in order to pronounce it correctly the way that you are supposed to in Igbo. But uh, one of my Igbo friends and tutors have been telling me, just use just the English P to pronounce that. So that's the only way I can get it out with my accent. So I apologize for that. Um, but again, heater is Ihe Epomako, and that means heater. Also, you can use the word Hita for heater, or you can use Opomako for heater. So again, Ihe Epomako heater. Again, every time you see me say E, that's converted to an A sound in Ebo, if that looks a little strange to you. Ihe Epomako heater. Insolationo is insulation. Insolationo, insulation. Now, I don't know how practical that would be in Southeast Nigeria trying to keep in the heat, but maybe it would be to keep in some of the air conditioning if you're fortunate to have that uh, in Nigeria. When we were there in our two trips there and to Uyo, a quiet bomb state, um, we basically stayed outside. You didn't see a whole lot of people indoors all the time when uh, it was daylight. And so we didn't really worry too much about a lot of the climate control types of things. So. I don't know how practical that would be in Nigeria. Maybe if you're uh, an Igbo in a diaspora like I am, and you're here in Alabama, and when I used to live in Michigan, insulation would make more of a difference to you then. But from what I can find on insulation, it would be pronounced insulationo, insulation. Okay. Sometimes you have some luxuries in your home. I don't have this luxury, but... I thought it would be good to have uh, the words for jacuzzi, jacuzzi tub, that is. And in Igbo, it would be pronounced jacuzzi tabo. Jacuzzi tabo for jacuzzi tub. 
So again, you see pretty much it is pretty easy to and intuitively to pick out what the words mean. Jacuzzi would be jacuzzi in English and tabo would be tub in Igbo. So it would be jacuzzi tabo for jacuzzi tub. Found two words for key. Obviously, you're going to need that for the locks on your door. Uh, so it would be intuye for key. Intuye, key. I also saw where key can also be said as igodo, igodo, key. So again, this is a different in English. Uh, igodo, if you notice it's spelled with an I to begin with, that I is converted to an E sound in Igbo. So it's igodo, key. Sometimes you're going to have to change some light bulbs high up or fix something above what you can reach. So you're going to need a ladder. And I found two words for ladder in Igbo. It would be lada for ladder. Lada, ladder. Or another word could be ubube for ladder. Ubube, ladder. Now, lamp has two different words. Uh, one I prefer because it's in the Igbo Bible and one that probably would be just commonplace to be able to say it. Uh, but lamp would be lampo. Lampo for lamp. That you looking character with the O at the bottom. We call that a diacritic in Igbo. That converts to an O sound. So that's why you hear me say lampo for lamp. Uh, however, uh, the one that's used in the Igbo Bible for lamp would be Oriana lamp. Again, Oriana lamp. And that's the one I prefer because, again, it's in the Word of God itself. So it's either Lampo for lamp or Oriana for lamp. Found two ways of describing laundry uh, in Igbo. And laundry uh, has the same word for bed. So you have to be careful on how you pronounce it. Because remember, Igbo is a language of tones too. So it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. Which would give you a different meaning to a word that's the same. For instance, uh, you'll see the word aqua. Uh, my voice went up and then down to say that's uh, for cloth. So aqua is cloth. But the word bed is the same word, and bed would just have a more deeper tone to it, so it would be aqua for bed. So for laundry, which means cloth in Igbo, you would just say cloth two times. So it would be aqua aqua, which is laundry, or you can also have osisa aqua, which would be laundry. Grass actually has one word to it, or lawn, whichever one you prefer. It means the same thing. It would be ahihia for grass or lawn. Ahihia, grass or lawn. Okay, I could not find one word for lawnmower. So lawnmower is basically more of a description of several evil words in order to say lawnmower. Uh, so what I found is that you would pronounce it this way. And again, you'll see that GB character. Now, that's another word that my English tongue won't allow me to pronounce correctly. Or I should say letters that uh, I can't say correctly because of my accent. But GB is one word. And my Igbo instructors have been telling me from afar, just pronounce that as a B as you would in English. Uh, so you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. So for Lanmore, what I would say would be Igwe Eji Buddha Ahihia. And that would break down as follows. Igwe means a machine. Uh, Eji would mean used for. And Buddha would mean to cut or mow. And as you saw earlier, Ahihia means grass. So to say Lanmore from my studies, it would be Igwe Eji Buddha Ahihia. So again, that would be Igwe Eji Buddha Ahihia Lanmore. For library, I don't have the literal translation, but it is made up of two words. It would be 
Akokwa for library. Aba Akokwa library. One thing I do know is that the word Akokwa means books. So it's relation to books. So again, library would be Aba Akokwa library. Light is Ako light. Ako light. Okay, linen closet. So again, you're going to see that word for cloth, aqua, being there. But um, Igbo is kind of like Spanish and other uh, languages that you have a noun, then you have an adjective behind it. For instance, aqua, you'll see the word linen behind it. It's telling you what type of cloth you're talking about. So you're talking about linen cloth. And then that final word is kaboldu, which means closet. So in other words, to say linen closet, you would say aqua linen kabodu for linen closet. Again, that would be aqua linen kabodu linen closet. I love how rooms are described in the house in the Igbo language because you put the word room first and then you'll put behind it what it's used for. So the word for room is imeola, that means room, and ezumike means relaxation. So the room for relaxation is the same thing as the living room in the United States. So that would be imeola ezumike, meaning living room. Again, imeola ezumike, living room, or room for relaxation, literally. Lock, of course, we talked about um, key earlier, but now we need to talk about lock. Lock would be mpachi lock, mpachi lock. Okay, microwave also is a concept, so there's not just one word that I found for it, but you have to describe it in the Evo language. So it's going to be a little bit longer process to say microwave. Uh, so microwave would be ingua. Remember microwave, uh, I mean, excuse me, ingua. We see that as meaning accessory, but it also can mean machine in some instances. Uh, so ingua, indakwa, inri would be microwave. And those words break down as ingua, meaning machine. Indakwa means to microwave and inri means food. So you're saying machine to microwave food means microwave. So put it all together, you would have ingua, indakwa, inri. Microwave. Okay, mailbox. You're literally actually saying uh, box of messages. And that equates to mailbox for us in the U.S. So ebay ozi means mailbox. ebay means box and ozi means messages. So box of messages, mailbox. So again, it would be ebay ozi mailbox. Okay. Again, as I studied Igbo language, a study of, of, of seven months now as a student, uh, so feel free to correct me when I make mistakes. Uh, mirror would be Enyo Mirror. Enyo Mirror. Neighborhood, again, looks like it's one of the concepts that just doesn't have one word for you to describe it. Uh, so what I found for neighborhood was Abata Obi. Neighborhood. Abata meaning environment or a certain place that you're in. And obi meaning residence. So it's like saying place of residence meaning your neighborhood. So it would be abata obi neighborhood. Nightstand, which mine looks pretty cluttered with stuff at night. Um, but nightstand would be tebolo bali. Tebolo bali. Nightstand. And what you're literally saying is table, meaning table, sounds like English, and abali means night. So it's like table for night, which equates to the same thing as nightstand in English in the U.S. here. So it's table obali, nightstand. Okay, office. 
Again, you'll see this a lot with, this, you'll say house and describe a portion of the house. And office is no exception. So ola means house, as you know, and aro means office. So putting it all together to say the home office, you would say ola aro, office. Ola aro, office. Uh, what I found for oven would be ovunu, oven, ovunu, oven. Uh, for painting, I have ese rese, painting, ese rese, painting. Paneling, which used to be very, very popular in the 70s, and I guess the early part of the 80s, 1980s in the U.S., um, would be an adaptation of an English word. It would be panlino paneling, panlino paneling. Pantry would be pronounced as pantiri pantry. Pantiri Pantry. As we get closer to a close, patio would be patio, patio, patio. Picnic table. Again, you got to use the concept of having a noun and an adjective. So you would say what your subject is and then describe it afterwards. And so in this case, to say picnic table, you say table first and then you'll say picnic. Uh, so it would be tabulu pikniki, picnic table. Tabulu being table, pikniki meaning picnic. So tabulu pikniki, picnic table. Photo sounds very uh, similar to us in the U.S. It would be photo would be photo. So photo, photo. Um, we don't say photo a whole lot in the U.S. We'll call it picture instead. But I think we're sophisticated enough to be able to uh, do that. So photo, photo. Okay. Here we go once again that you have to use two words to describe a concept. Uh, for picture frame, it would be opokolo photo. Opokolo actually means frame, and then photo means the picture part. So you're saying a frame used for a picture. So it's opokolo photo for picture frame. Pillow sounds comforting of itself when it's pronounced in Igbo. It would be mpalisi pillow. Mpalisi pillow. Plate would be a fere plate. A fere plate. Plumbing would be plumbino plumbing. Plumbino plumbing. For pool, it would be polu, pool, polu, pool. Okay, porch. It's funny that I live in American South, even though I'm a Yankee, you know, originally from the North. But, you know, down here in the South, in Alabama, you'll see these big old porches on the front of the houses. And that's, um, you know, traditional Southern architecture. Uh, so I thought I'd include that also in my studies of the Igbo language. Uh, it would be pronounced as pauchi for porch. Pauchi, porch. Okay. To describe the type of bed that you're talking about, of course you would use bed and then you would use description afterwards. So bed would be aqua. Remember the deep tone of your voice. Aqua is bed. But if you want to say queen size bed, you'll have to say aqua and then queen behind it. So the word for queen is eze wanyi. And that's broken down to eze means king. 
and Wan Yi means um, uh, woman. So you're basically saying a woman king, which means a queen. So you got to put all three words together to say queen size bed. And you would say aqua easy Wan Yi for queen size bed. And again, Igbo has two letters that actually is one letter. That NW that you see in Wan Yi is actually one letter in Igbo. And that N becomes silent at times if you want to think about an English term. So again, it would be aqua eze wany, queen size bed. Refrigerator would be friji, friji, refrigerator. The J there sounds like a G. So it's friji, refrigerator. To describe a roof, then you would describe a portion of the house once again. But in this case, I don't know why it's in the front instead of the back, but there's some exceptions where the description is in the front and not the back. And this is uh, one of those where you talk about the roof, the description is in the front, not the back of the word ola. So you would say elu ola, roof. Elu means the high point and ola is the house. So you're saying the high point of the house is the same thing as the roof. So it's Elu Ola, roof. Okay, as I mentioned to you earlier, we talked about it. Room is in generic form, just saying room without describing what type of room it is. It would be Ime Ola, room. Ime Ola, room. Rug would be rogue. Rogue is rug. Rogue, rug. Okay, last two uh, for today, and then probably next week I'll continue items 101 to wherever we end up in my studies. I'm still studying this throughout the week. Uh, but again, this is items 51 to 100 in my studies of Ebo. Again, thank you for letting me be a student in this. I'm not a teacher by any form or fashion, just a student trying to learn uh, the language and culture of my ancestral people, of course, as you know. Uh, but screen door would be Ihu a excuse me, say it again. Ihu enyo oza. So ihu enyo means screen, and oza means door in this case. So ihu enyo oza means screen door. Okay, and last but not least for this session, as I use these videos to teach myself the Igbo language, um, shelf would be shelfo, shelf. Shelf, -o shelf. So again, I thank you all for joining me. Um, probably next week, good Lord, let me live. I'll go over some more items in the house. You'd be surprised at how many items there are in the house to describe, and you have to learn uh, within the Igbo language, just like you did uh, in English as your primary tongue, if you're, that's your primary tongue, like it is for mine. So I thank you for joining me, and I can bid you adieu by saying ka mesia. That means goodbye. Have a good day and chukwo gozie gi. That means God bless you. Uh, have a good night. Bye bye.